I think the Corps made a significant change. And we and the community are very proud. Now in St. Louis, there was no law that required segregation. There was no law that said certain places could not serve blacks and whites in any way differently. It was a tradition, it was what had happened. It just became the norm, the norm to segregate. There became a growing concern throughout the communities for race relations and improvement in race relations and a new equality for all people. This interest spread throughout the area and uh, people began to have meetings in their homes to discuss local problems, many of which had to do with race. So we began our long, long struggle to open up eating facilities at Six Baron Fuller and their first floor lunch counters. Working now at the dime stores with sit-ins every Saturday for two or three hours at a time, all with a totally peaceful approach. One person had a clock, huge clock, hanging on their back and uh, the hands could be moved. Persons seated next to that person, core members, uh, would move the hands on the clock every 15 minutes and would then say to people who sat next to them, we've been waiting for service 15 minutes, half an hour, 45 minutes. It attracted attention and that's what we wanted attention for what we were doing, and we were very peaceful. We were quite pleasant in talking to anyone, from the manager to the waiters to anyone else. The district manager said to me in an aside, what are you doing with a group like this? Of course, I responded, these are my very good friends. Our demonstrations were not mentioned in the daily newspapers at all. We did, however, seek publicity uh, in the black community, from the St. Louis American, from the Argus newspaper, because we needed to recruit people and to get people of color working and eating and making use of facilities. All of this eventually did bring about a change in those policies. Sticks and Fuller began to serve at their lunch counter. Dime stores, the same thing. We had a list of about 20 or 25 places that were handed out to uh, black members in the black community to encourage them to use these facilities. That way, uh, we're able to make a gain that we saw take place become a permanent change. In 1961, the St. Louis Board of Aldermen passed a bill, a public accommodations bill, so that uh, it was required that everyone who, who uh, had a public accommodations would, by law, have to give service to blacks as well as whites. 